So welcome to the boat review. I've hired this Brinks Jazz number three in the class from Barnes Brinkcraft based in Wroxham and you join me on a beautiful sunny afternoon. It's Monday the 23rd of June 2014 at the St Bennet's Abbey moorings here on the River Bure and this is the first part of the boat that we're going to talk about. The forward seating well which of course is an ideal place to be on a lovely sunny day. So let's start the review here and work our way through to the back of the boat. So as you can see, you've got full seating round here in the front of the well, um, which is not too high, um, so it's ideal to step onto and then up to here to get off of the boat. So imagine it as a, a kind of a bathtub style boat, because it's forward steer, but there is also an additional outside steering position that we'll talk about and show you in a moment. So this is an absolute ideal sun trap. You could also sit here and eat outside. It's a safe place if you've brought your kids with you and you know they can kneel on here and look out and be outside but still be seen from the helm here and uh, be perfectly safe. For those of you that find raising and lowering mud weights a bit of a chore, there is a fully automatic mud weight winch which you simply lift these flaps up here and that pushes it out and that brings it in so that's absolutely ideal also up here you've got a canopy that keeps the worst of the sun out if you want to stand here for example um, you're not in the full glare of the sunlight and also of course on an inclement day that's going to keep this area dry as well so next up we're going to go through into the saloon through these uh, double doors here now unfortunately, this may just be on this particular boat, the clips that hold the doors back are missing. So I'm afraid that these doors don't stay open on a windy day when the wind's coming um, from the front of the boat. But inside, now in the saloon, you can see this canopy at the front. It also acts as a sunshade uh, for being in the saloon. There is an enormous amount of space, light, height and opening windows in here and I've got many of the windows open and there are many windows that you can open. So let's just talk about windows because usually on boats you know they're usually hopper windows, they don't slide fully back. These here open fully. This opens fully over here and again on this side and this side. Now you haven't got a, a sunshine roof as some boats like you know bathtub forward steer boats might have that's perfectly okay because you've got these doors here which let all of the breeze in and the light and it's just a really lovely space to be. Now one of the other sides of uh, drawback that, that some may believe in is that as you'll see when we go outside there's very little side decks at this portion of the boat. So whilst that might make from getting around the boat or mooring up a little bit tricky, for me it didn't. I just came in and stepped off here at the, the bow of the boat. But it does mean the benefit inside is this amazing width. Um, and full use is made of the width. But let's get down to details. We're talking storage on this boat. There is an amazing amount of storage, if I just move this, the skipper's manual. Uh, just look at how deep that goes. That's where your cleaning supplies are. But it's stuff like this. There's a gap. We'll put a cupboard in. This was built and designed by Porter and Haylett. It spent its time on the French canals before being brought over here to the UK. This here is a pull-out double berth. Um, now, one thing I would draw your attention to, it's not very soft. That's very firm. When you sit on it, you do notice this. Um, and this here again, it's all very, very firm foam. And you'll see these two hooks and strings. So what I'll do is I'll pull that out and show you magically how this would be if you were going to make this up into a double berth. So here is how it is made as a double berth. And as you can see, it's a, it's a mishmash of different cushions. And it's a very strange way of doing things because the back of the, uh, the seat uses those to hook up to these hook mounts here. And that holds that up. That exposes the seat squab, the rear of, where you're normally sitting down. Then you pull out this section here forward, 
as you can see here. And then under here are these big squabs here. So that is how the double berth appears. So effectively, yes, it's a double width berth, and it's a very generous one. But um, whoever's sleeping here, obviously there is this big gap. So, you know, there's no comfortable rolling together. And of course there also is this part here, and that doesn't quite fit. So it's, it's temporary. And it's for this reason that I would say this is a couple's boat. Yes, you could sleep four. Yes, you could bring, you know, two kids and have them in the back because that can be either a double berth or bunk beds and mum and dad could be here. But really and truly this is a boat for two people to have the back cabin and this is an occasional berth that can be made up. But as you can see, it is not the most comfortable looking because of those gaps and the hardness of the foam. So that's my opinion, yours may differ. Let's put this back and carry on our tour of the saloon. So as you can see everything is now simply folded away and uh, we'll move over to the helm here. There's a very nice soft comfortable helm seat and an absolute mass of gauges and dials. When you're sat down on the helm seat I'm about five foot nine as you can see that is your head height out of the uh, the boat through the windows. I've done this with the curtains here um, and the reason why I did this was simply to keep them out of the way so I could use this window as an additional point of view. Now, as you'll see, if you keep watching these, the uh, outside of the boat, there are very small side decks at the front of the boat. Now, this means that the bow of the boat on this boat, unlike most bathtubs, is relative, relatively pointy. Um, and that means that where we are here, it's almost like reminds me of like a commercial craft where this is your little cockpit area, the helm, separate from everything else. But what it does mean is that it's very difficult to judge what's going on around you because there is just no way to see the back of the boat. And let's just stick our head out the window and I'll show you what I mean. So if you stick your head out the window, this is the view that you get. You can see the actual slope of the boat as it curves round. You can't actually really see. Now if you really lean out the window, then you can see the back of the boat. And you can see here how narrow those side decks are. In fact, in places they're not even the width of sort of the average shoe. So very extreme cautions needed if you're going to be walking along these. I didn't, I used the rear entrance which I'll talk about in a moment and just stepping off of the uh, front of the boat here. So let's go through the gauges, they all look very complicated but they're very simple indeed. This is your engine, obviously start it, this is the wiper switch, this is your engine PSI for oil, your water temperature for the engine, your revs, domestic battery voltage, engine starter voltage, Bilge pump, which is manual or auto, it's just on auto all the time where you can manually press this. Domestic water on and off, the horn, the spotlight which has been disconnected. That's why when it was on the French canals, obviously there are tunnels, you'd need the spotlight. You've got a CD radio, you've got your horn button. That's the main uh, switch for turning the anchor off. So for example, if you did have your kids and they were messing around with the buttons, you can turn that off down there. and. They can press them all they like, but the anchor's not going to go anywhere. Down here you've got a very modern Espasha system for your heating, which is fully digital temperature controlled. And also it has a cool blow facility, which is nice on a warm day. And that's to change the helm from lower to upper. That's your accessory lighter socket for, for example, charging your phone. And that's an engine hours. It has hydraulic steering which is very smooth as you can see and you've got your throttle over here which is very smooth also down here. So that's really the helm, it's nice to have this here to put a drink or some munches while you're going along but even when you're standing up as you can see you are really, you know, you've got to be aware, it's a bit like thinking there is 28 foot behind me so you know presume something's behind me and then you won't sort of go too wrong. So a little bit more care. This boat is more kind of being designed I think for the living accommodation and the, the storage space rather than necessarily a driver's boat. Continuing talking about storage, here we have the rest of the saloon. There's ideal storage everywhere as you can see in all of these cupboards here. 
nice sideboard to put things. A very nice TV here, as you can see, with a decent remote control and a great aerial. And the lighting provided is these nice halogen spotlights. As you can see, they're very bright in the evening. And um, you've got the speakers here, just two, one and two there. So that is the saloon. As you can see also, fitted out with the teak and holly flooring, there's the heater out there. That's the cold air return that sucks the air in before it goes through and gets heated. Let's go and have a look at the galley next. So you join me here in the galley on Brinks Jazz and you'll see that it's been fitted by Barnes Brinkcraft with this very nice worktop double sink arrangement. This appears to be like a very smooth, strong granny effect almost. Um, you've got a really nice quality mixer tap. You've got a really nice full-size domestic cooker with a rapid boil hob here. A grill which works wonders and a proper oven. It's also piezo ignition, so you don't need your matches. Uh, again, more work top, work top space here. You've got your table that goes there, which is very substantial indeed. And as all sort of the typical Porsche and Halet design, this here just looks like a, a piece of wood, but it's actually the drawer for the cutlery. And then up here, you've got your mugs, your glasses, and your plates. The utensils, well they're down here and they provide you egg cups and all sorts of stuff even an ashtray from bygone times when you could smoke indoors. That's the bin uh, which is built in. You see we've got a full-size domestic fridge and a decent microwave. If you're going to use the microwave do please run the engine at about 1500 rpm in neutral and that will mean that it will work to its full potential and won't drain your batteries down. But, as I said, this is a 29 foot boat, but look at that for a galley. Great space to work around in. It's open plan, you can talk here, you could be sat there having a conversation while you're doing the, the tea, or someone could be driving along and you could be doing a sandwich. So you're part of the stuff, it's not like there's a screened off section here, so it's really nice. It adds to that whole light and airy feel. So let's now move on to the shower, which is separate on this boat. So just off from the galley, this is the shower and it's separate and my goodness me, it's a lovely shower. Look at this. It's a proper cubicle, there's a seat that folds up there. Let's just step in here. Full height shower, you've got stuff here, you can put you know, your shower gels and so on and so forth, nice mixer taps, really nice shower head itself, it's got an opening window which is nice, and it's just a really nice space, you know, there's no shower curtain that's going to cling to you, and once you've had your shower and come out of here, of course, all of the spray is confined to this space, it's separate from the toilet and the sink, so there's no mopping up needed, it's just I've had my shower and I'll come out, thank you very much, that's done. So I like that about this boat. Also just to the left of the shower is one of the entrances. Of course you've got the, the doors there that we saw earlier. This is the other entrance and uh, what I'm going to do is a change from normal planning. We're going to go outside next and then we're going to return back inside. So keeping stuff a little bit different. Let's head off outside through this opening. So this is one of the entrances and exits to the boat. It's a huge polycarbonate tinted area here, okay? I've got it closed at the moment and um, what would be handy is if another bar could be put on the inside here because when you've closed it and now you need to come out, you've got to hold on to one of these and really struggle to get it going enough to then get your hand around the edge and then you can slide it back but that initial getting going is made very hard because there's no grip to be able to do it there's one on the outside for closing but uh, these are very steep steps but they are covered in non-slip so even when if they're wet you shouldn't go tumbling down them but do take care when you're coming in and I'd advise coming down facing forwards when you're coming in from the boat so as we come up out of these steps here as you can see into the lovely sunlight here. 
this is the part of the boat where we have got this side deck here. It's a kind of an average size as you can see with my shoe for width comparison, size 10 shoes if you're interested. Um, you walk around the back of the boat, there is good provision of handrails here. And this is where the engine is. It's a hydraulically driven boat, it's not a shaft driven boat. Um, so you walk across the engine bay, here's the steps, it's excellent non-slip coatings on and you come up to what you could call the sun deck. Now originally when this was going to be in the French canals this would have where the parasol went and then there would have been a couple of folding chairs up here. We come round here and this is the outside helm and it is actually very comfortable and you're afforded an absolutely lovely view. It's about 7 foot 10, 8 foot air draft this boat so it gives you an idea of how far up you are and able to see right over the marshes that if this was just a normal forward steer boat you wouldn't be able to. Up here it's very simple, you've got your throttle, your RPM and a button for your horn. I think originally this would have had an engine stop button and a key where you could start the engine from up here as well. But uh, now you just start the engine downstairs, convert the helm over, make sure this is in neutral and come upstairs. Also, this area here is reinforced so it's very strong, makes an ideal huge sunbathing area as you can see. Or you could sit down here and face you know, whoever's driving. That helm seat there is good for three people to sit on. So again, really great use of space. It's only a 29 foot boat, it's only 11 foot wide. But by utilising this, reinforcing the, the upper decks and so on and so forth, there's absolutely no give in any of this. It's very solid. Um, it, it makes an ideal place. The only thing, obviously, care has to be taken when you're coming down. There is a type of handrail there, but that's not, of course, of much help when you're standing up here. And you have to hold on to here, and then try not to fall into the river. That is where your pump out is, that is where your fuel is. The water filler cap, however, is right over at the front of the boat. And as you can see from this perspective on the bank, it goes from reasonably wide and then tapers off to virtually nothing. And just a point that on this side of the boat, there is no widening of the side decks. But a minor point, There's the water filler cap. Not the most pretty of designs perhaps, but uh, again this is a boat that I feel was designed more for the comfort and the space of the living accommodation rather than how good it looked or you know how practical some aspects of it was. So let's head on in and we're going to look at the heads next and then finally the main sleeping cabin. So we're back inside again and first of all we've got more of these very bright halogen lights and nice to see some hooks, really great, you know, hang up your, your coat up here when you've come in or if it was uh, not a lovely day, you know, somewhere to hang your brolly before coming out and uh, leaving the boat, so that's nice to see. Come through this door here into the heads and um, you've got a full size uh, wash basin, you've got storage space here you've got place to hang your towel and that is a gauge for your toilet tank so that's very handy to have uh, to keep an eye of if you need uh, a pump out it's quite spacious in here you've got a mirror provided again another nice bright light close the door funny to see a manual bilge pump on this boat it has got an automatic one of course but basically that goes in there if all else fails and you do this oh Christ we're sinking um, but yeah that shouldn't be ever needed, ever. However, the toilet. It's one of those half bowl types of toilets, as you can see, it's only a dinky little one. Um, and it is in here at rather um, a, a, an acute angle. I think it might be better if the toilet was like this rather than like that. And yes, I got caught by the sun during uh, 
this weekend I've had this boat out. Um, but then of course you know you can use shore uh, side facilities and you know you're not going to spend an awful lot of time in here. But uh, just a point I thought I'd make a note of, there is a difference, some of these toilets are the half bowl and some of the full bowl and it's just a, a matter of space and design you know short of completely ripping out the whole area and putting in a smaller wash basin you're not going to be able to solve that problem so I don't think it's really an issue you've got your your uh, toilet roll holder there as well everything on these boats locks by the way um, all of the Connoisseur, Porter and Haylet boats they always have uh, locking doors on them so then you come out of here and again, some people might say, I'll just point this out, that well, what happens if you've just come out of the shower and you're moored up and this hasn't got a curtain or anything? You know, there's not much privacy because this is tinted a lot from the outside, but especially at night, you could see straight in. And from, from my point about saying that, I don't think that is an issue because usually you're moored here against a bank or the other way round. So yes, someone could if they were walking by just at that opportune moment. So you sort of going from the shower to the um, the cabin that we're yet to see in a moment. But um, I, I think it would be such a, an unfortunate situation. And even if you're going to be more sort of uh, stern on and next door to your neighbour, um, I don't know. Do people really like spying on people on the broad through boats? I'm I'm not sure. So I wouldn't say it's an issue, if it had a curtain it would be difficult to fit and so but I'm just drawing it to your attention you know it might be something that some people find um, you know a privacy issue it certainly didn't bother me and I don't think it would bother you know many people but just wanted to bring that to your attention so next and finally we're going to go into the cabin at the back which is a bit different and you'll see why. Let's go and have a look. This is the main cabin, the only cabin on this boat, and as you can see straight away it's very light, it's very spacious, it's got a lovely high ceiling inside, and you'll see it's a double bed, which is how I've got it set up to be configured at the present time. Now, as you can see by the pillows, it's not quite a true width double bed, exactly, but um, it, it would happily and comfortably see a, a couple in there, it's very comfortable, um, and I had no trouble with uh, sleeping in here, in fact a little bit too much sleep was had, too comfortable. Very nice pillows. Uh, but let's get on in here. You've got built-in shelving down here. You've got somewhere you can stow your, your shoes as well. And then coming around here, this is your open wardrobe. As you can see it goes back quite a way around the corner as well. Um, and that's great for storing your luggage. There's a hot air heating up there here. There's a mirror there, and again, it's this lovely. And I think you know what helps it. I've just, I've just thought of this. It's this um, laminates they've used on the wood. It's got a wood grain, as you can see, but it's incredibly bright, and everything. It's not clinical, but it's just very bright, and you know, it reflects the light really well, and it means that everywhere has this space, and it's lovely to have the the holly antique flooring down and it means keeping it clean and easy and it just adds to the elegance almost of this boat so I'm really thinking this boat would be absolutely ideal for a, a couple or just first timers to the broads because whilst this boat isn't um, very long or very wide it offers great space you can steer upstairs and you've got great views so you can see where you're going you can see the side of the boat although I would say if you're going to be mooring up Obviously there's going to be two of you to have good communication with the person with the ropes or do as I did and when you're coming into more use the downstairs helm so you can just see where the bank is and step off easily. But the whole boat I think is really well fitted out, is very spacious, great use of space, great storage and a very comfortable, very reasonable price boat as well. This is one of Barnes Brinkcraft's cheapest boats can you believe. So. Let's have a look at the last thing which is a little bit quirky about this boat and you might have been given away for the light that was a little bit lower down than the one on the ceiling. And if you missed that this is the ceiling light and there's one of these lights. Now the whole boat would have originally had these fluorescent lights and Barnes Brinkcraft have replaced all of them but this one. 
um, because obviously you'll see why they probably didn't replace this one in a moment. So this is the configuration as a double berth, but it can change. So as you can see we're still in the same rear cabin but we've suddenly grown a lot of space and some of the beds missing. Well this is because these are bunk beds. You simply take this foam squab off of the section here which makes this part here incredibly light. Put it up here on the holders on the wall and hey presto you've got bunk beds. And that's why this light's down here because if ever sleeping there they can just reach forward to turn their own bunk light off and the reason why I reckon they've kept this is because those halogen glass lights can get a bit hot on the outside whereas these old fluorescent ones stay very cool. So this means that the kids could have this room and mum and dad could make up the bed as earlier I said in the saloon. So as a family boat it would work really well or if it's friends coming you know there's so many sleeping options with this boat. It's, it's a brilliant thought out way of doing things and I think it's an absolutely lovely boat with a great deal of space and versatility. So as you can tell when you're going along inside the engine noise is virtually non-existent because it's outside you just hear the whine of the hydraulic pump that turns the propeller and even on an absolutely glorious sunny day like today being downstairs isn't always a bad thing because it protects you from getting too sunburnt if you've got sensitive skin like myself but with all of the windows you don't feel closed in all of them open there's a great deal of breeze and light that comes through it's a really nice boat I'd say ideally suited for a couple, so if you are a couple and you want to have something that's very reasonably priced, that's got 240 volts electrics, very versatile sleeping arrangements, a full size cooker, full size fridge, a separate spacious shower compartment, an outside seating area and steering area and the forward well for seating as well, great for fishing, what more could you want? This is a really versatile, really lovely little boat. It is little, it's 29 foot, but inside you'd never know it. So if this is what you're looking for, I tell you, go to Barnes Brinkcraft and have a look and see what you think yourself. But from here on Brinks Jazz 3, somewhere on the River Bure, heading back towards Roxham. If you have been, thanks for watching.